Moving on to chapter 16, we have been talking about waves and wave properties in chapter 14. And then 15, we talk about sound. And now where we're going to go in chapter 16 is the other piece of uh, waves that really impact your um, wave living, and that is light. So when we talk about 16.1, we're going to talk about the ray model of light. Light, a couple of straight in pieces of information about light. Light acts as both a wave and a particle. Remember that because we're going to talk about that. That's an important concept. It travels in a straight line as a wave and a particle. And the ray model of light is just explaining that it's represented as a ray that travels in a straight path. So kind of combining those first two hyphen points. More about light. Sources of light. When we talk about sources of light, we have two sources. We have a luminous source, an object that emits light, such as the sun. That's a luminous source. And we have an illuminated source, an object that reflects light, becoming visible in the process, such as the moon. Now you see the moon all the time during the night. The moon is not giving off light. It's not a luminous source. It's being illuminated by the sun. Now, when we talk about light, there's three ways in which light can travel through something. Opaque, transparent, translucent. Opaque is a media that does not transmit any light, such as brick. Transparent, a medium that transmits light, such as air or glass. And translucent, medium that transmits light, but not clearly. Frosted bulbs, lampshades, uh, those really thick glass tiles that you might see put over windows in like bathrooms or uh, anywhere else where it lets light in, but you can't see through the actual window. A uh, couple vocab things. Since we are introducing light, we are very heavy with the concept of light. The quantity of light. We have luminous flux, which is measured in P, the rate at which energy is emitted from a luminous source. And we have a luminance, E, the rate at which light strikes a surface. So two options. Luminous flux, how much energy is being given off from a source. Illuminance, how much is being struck. Uh, how much is being absorbed or struck on a particular surface. So two more pieces of vocab. Last little bit about light is how quickly it travels. We know light travels very quickly. We talked in the last chapter that light is many thousand times faster uh, than sound. How did we actually measure that? Well, we go through the history of it. Galileo was the first to say that light travels at a finite speed. Up until then, they thought light was infinitely fast. Uh, Ole Raymer then in the 1670s measures the time ellipse, uh, knowing what we've talked about with Kepler, the exact time it should take an object to pass around Jupiter. He measures the time delay and figures out that light travels at 2.2 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Now, that's pretty darn good observation considering the uh, utensils that he had to measure time and distance and everything in the 1670s. Then we come into the 20th century, and Albert Mickelson makes the accurate measurement in a vacuum at 3.0 times 10 to the 8th, which is what it is. If you want to get technical, it's 2.99972. Uh, and more decimals after that times 10 to the 8th. So we use the speed of light as C. You will see light as C, the speed of light as C, and it's 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Light year, you're going to hear the concept of a light year. That is a distance. It's not the amount of time. Light year is a distance, and that's the amount of time, or sorry, the amount of distance, how long light travels in one year, which is... 9.46 times 10 to the 12th kilometers, so 946 trillion kilometers, light travels in one year. So if you were traveling at the speed of light, you would travel 946 trillion kilometers in one year. So speed of light is C, light year is a distance, not a unit of time, uh, explaining how far you would go if you, how far light travels in one year. And that's kind of our introductory Lesson on lights 16 point.